this a lot because it just hits me a lot when I hear something I like that you know God has has put into us a, a need to have certain forms of music. In fact, it can be expressed mathematically, and it, it's a fascinating dynamic. The, the one, the four, the five. If you're in the music theory, in fact, sometime we'll get someone on to talk about this because I think it's fascinating. I think it's I think it's a, one of the lesser known miracles of God that we can communicate that way and feel that way through music. Um, you know, God uses so many tools that if we are really paying attention, to me, they're, they're inspirational. They add to this piece. Yeah, it is, you're frustrated. Like I was talking about in the first segment today of, of just getting loaded up on a truly tragic news. There's a video of a guy, a guy made. He was in Lahaina trying to get out. And thank God he lived, but other people didn't because the authorities literally blocked the exits, which which cannot be defended. Uh, that sort of incompetence cannot be defended. And if it's not incompetence, uh, I, I couldn't even believe it's not incompetence. It has to be incompetence. And that loading up. Oh, exercise, how was it? Oh, the ああ。やった。ああ。シャワーも入った。ああ。チャイニーズ、ベトナムイス。え? エレベーターああ。トイレ使わないんだよ。ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっ
シャワー入ったんでしょ運動ついていけたの今日運動ついていけたのよかったねあのー、いつもの先生博画のあの人はお父さん見て挨拶するんでしょあそこに椅子に座ってると手を挙げてさ挨拶するよああいい人じゃない<笑><笑>お父さんよりで年ちょっと下だよねちょっと若いくらいだよ同じだよね今年
humanity is inexorably threatened by humanity itself. Okay, that last line, humanity is inexorably threatened by humanity itself, says a man who sees no reason to limit abortions to any period of time, up to and including the day of birth. Humanity is threatened by humanity itself, says a man who is party to the statement that we need to somehow get to fewer people on the planet. How many fewer? 7.5 billion fewer. But, but, but done in an equitable <coughs> way so that the pain is spread about. Just make sure you know that he Still means that in the kindest possible oh. manner. He says okay, this, okay, of course, okay. and this is the easy part, okay, after okay. having okay. flown to that event to deliver that speech. Of course, on a private plane, okay. this is a man who also said, well, I don't own any private planes, except, well, his rich wife owns them. They're in her name. So I believe God just says, please, please, gander here, take a look. I'll put them up on a stage for you. I'll let you see the emptiness of human conceit. I'll let you see how I continue to shame the wise. Oh, pardon me, yes, the, 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 to shame the wise with the simple what things the of the world. Simple things you and I can see. Simple things like sometimes things aren't simple. What would you call a police officer who came to your house to investigate a burglary? Okay. Comes to your house to investigate a burglary. And he left open the door to your house. In fact, in fact, he welded it open. And you came home and said, my, wait. You're a police officer. You just welded open the doors and windows to my house so anyone can get in? Well, you're a racist, would say the officer. Gibberish. And yet at our southern border, that's exactly what has happened. They have welded open the doors to the gates that your tax money paid for. But sometimes things aren't that clean cut. Sometimes they're not that simple. When I was in Seattle, I got to know a family who in all likelihood are illegal immigrants. And incidentally, they're far better parents than I was, far better. The reason I got to know them is they came to a skating rink where my daughter did a lot of skating. She was a speed skater, we spent a lot of time there. And I got to talking to their oldest daughter one day, just skating. She was a teen and she was asking me questions about my job. I said, hey, what do you do? What do you want to do? She's 12. She said, I will be a respiratory therapist. That's what she said, not I want to be, I will be a respiratory therapist. I said, oh, that's fantastic, you already know. She goes, well, yes, I'm in an accelerated program at Highline Community College working that now. I said, how old are you? She said, I'm 12. I said, this is such a blessing. And, and, and that came true. I learned that both parents worked three jobs. The father of the household, who didn't speak good English at all. In fact, the kids had to translate for him. He had two chicken plucking jobs and a janitorial job. Uh, the wife, the mother of these four incredible children, also had three jobs, two of them in hotels, one of them at a cleaning service. And their kids worked and their kids knew the Lord. And I said at the time, because they gave hints from time to time that, that they worked in jobs like that because they lacked the legal ability to work in others. They came in through an open door and yet they were blessings. I would have gone to court and posted a bond and then whatever I could to keep them in this country after they went out, stood in line and came in the right way. So as we are outraged, let us not have our hearts transformed. Yeah, it's outrageous. They've welded the gates open, but let us make sure we remember our enemies are not flesh and blood, but spirits and principalities in the dark realms. Our enemies aren't those people. Let's not be transformed to think otherwise. In the beginning, 
was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And I believe God values words. And because of that, we speak because he first loved us. We speak his word. We walk in the path of Jesus to make disciples of all nations. So until you and I get to speak again, I wish upon you the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will rest upon you. This is the Disciples View. I'm Todd Herman. God be with you. The views and opinions expressed in this broadcast may not necessarily reflect those of the American Family Association or American Family Radio. 90.5 KTXG Greenville, Dallas. Lord, please let me make it. Please, Lord. Or American Family Radio. I missed the show again. Can't find the time to catch the live shows? No worries. Wait, what? You can listen and download all your favorite shows for free. For free? That's right, for free. Just visit the podcast page on AFR.net. AFR.net. This is American Family Radio, a listener-supported ministry of the American Family Association. American Family News, I'm Mr. Keith. The first ever mugshot of a former president has ignited reaction from both supporters and detractors. Brian Spells takes a look. Former U.N. ambassador and campaign rival to former President Trump, Nikki Haley, tells Fox News while she's reserving judgment in the case, to her, the mugshot represents, quote, a sad day in America. I think it's disgraceful. I mean, the idea that we're seeing a mugshot of a 77-year-old former president, I mean, how did we get to this point? The comments come after the former president was officially booked at Georgia's Fulton County Jail on Thursday. The Republican-led House Judiciary Committee has launched a probe into Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis and whether the prosecution of Trump is politically motivated. Many congressional Democrats have consistently said that no one is above the law. In Washington, Ryan Schmelz, Fox News. The U.S. is negotiating an agreement with Iran to secure the release of five American prisoners. In exchange, the Biden administration agreed to unfreeze some $6 billion in Iranian assets. Arkansas Senator Tom Cotton criticizes that approach. There are other ways to bring these Americans home, which we all want to see. But by engaging in these prisoner swaps or giving away billions of dollars in ransom, all we do is encourage more hostage taking. Americans heard from eight Republican presidential hopefuls Wednesday night on key 2024 issues during the first GOP primary debate. One of the candidates on the stage was Vivek Ramswamy, who says the war in Ukraine could help bring an end to Russia and China's partnership. The Russia-China alliance is the greatest threat the United States faces. There is not a single candidate in either party who has offered a coherent plan of how to disband that alliance. I have, well, and I want to use the Ukraine war as a chance to bring that alliance apart. An immigration enforcement organization says border states are legitimately crying foul as sanctuary jurisdictions are reaping outsized shares of federal assistance for the migrant crisis. Chad Groening has more. As part of the budget reconciliation process during a lame duck session of the 117th Congress, $800 million was earmarked to alleviate some of the burdens the border crisis is imposing on state and local governments. The largest share of those funds has been directed to New York, almost $105 million which has border state officials seeing red. Arizona's independent senator, Kirsten Sinema, who formerly left the Democratic Party in December 2022, is livid at the White House and the congressional Democratic leadership over how the money is being allocated. Ira Melman is media director for the Federation for American Immigration Reform. He says it's easy to understand why Sinema is crying foul. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer is from New York. The House Minority Leader, Hakeem Jeffries, is also from New York. And she was kind of wondering out loud whether that might have something to do with the fact that New York got the largest share in spite of the fact that other states on the front lines were getting far less. So there's an insufficient pot of money and it is being manipulated in a way that benefits allies of the White House apparently, not necessarily the states that are being hurt the most.